Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Susie. I'm the owner and creator here at Susie on the Farm. I'm sorry, you guys, I have not been doing a intro since my surgery. It's just about all I can do to get these projects done. Uh, for today's project, I already had this wooden um, sign already painted white and distressed. I'm going to be using the retro stamps, and I needed a sign to hang above my stove and it was just a really narrow place. So I thought the word grocery would go well in my kitchen. So I took the retro stamps and I am just going to stamp the word grocery on this white wood plank sign. This was a um, sign that had something else on it that I got at the thrift store for $2.99 and I've just covered what was on there with some white paint. Um, for this project, I wanted to um, come up with a way to use some scrap paint inlays that I had. I had previously used this Rose Chance paint inlay on a little um, nightstand. So I had several pieces here that I had already done one application and it was done with a lighter color paint. So I knew that it would work here. So um, I am just going to paint in the word grocery with this fresh sage. This is resin paint, a uh, rethunk junk resin paint. The last time I used a paint inlay with this paint, it worked really well. I'm not sure how this is gonna turn out being it's on a small surface with um, previously used inlays, but I really don't need a perfect image. I just want to give this a little bit of color um, and just a little bit of more interest than just doing the words. So for paint inlay, you usually do one coat of paint, let it dry, and then put the paint inlay over the second coat. I got in a little bit of hurry here, so I'm just going to do one coat of this fresh sage paint and then you'll lay your paint inlay over your wet paint rub it in and dampen it so i'm going to go ahead and do all the letters here painting laying down the inlay wetting the back of the inlay and then i use a cloth to get out any wrinkles To the nitty-gritty with these scraps piecing them in here like i said it doesn't have to be perfect i just wanted a little bit of color so i let it dry for about an hour and then i'm going to come back and re-wet it um, and i let it sit for just a minute and then i'm going to begin pulling it off um, it does come out a little messy um, you'll see that when i get them all pulled off but it's really not an issue i just took a little artist brush and cleaned up the edges with some white paint so you really couldn't even tell um, but I do like the way this turned out and it was a perfect use for all these little pieces of inlays so once I cleaned up the edges with my paintbrush then I am going to come back with the stamps and stamp back over the letters just to give them um you know, just to get the edges really clean and crisp. And I got that all done. And then I was still felt like this sign needed something more. So now I'm going to get out another stamp set. And I'm going to use the um, La, Campagne, La Campagne stamp set i know i'm saying that wrong everybody's saying it differently and i'm just going to randomly stamp some of the floral from that stamp set it's got lots of great florals along with 
uh, French country animals. But for this one, since the rose chintz is floral, I'm just going to randomly stamp some floral around it. Um, most of your stamps do come with these stamp masks. That way you can stamp over them and it looks as though that stamp is behind. So I've got the mask on each of these letters and I'm just going to prep my stamp set with a little bit of um, light grit sandpaper and just kind of decide where I want to place these floral images. And then I'm just going to randomly stamp them all over the sign. the floral stamp like I like it. I took my ink pad and just uh, distressed the edges of the sign and then I took a black sharpie and did in between the planks, the wood planks, and I really like how this sign turned out. It's different. Um, it's not perfect, but it goes really great with the pops of color in my otherwise black and white kitchen. What do you guys think about this sign and using the inlays like this? For our second project of today, I thrifted this wooden bowl that had definitely seen better days. I think it was $2.99. It was scratched up, beat up, and so I knew that I wanted to paint it. I took off all the tags and cleaned it up really well, and then I started putting a coat of Dixie Belle with the color Drop Cloth. Immediately, I could tell that there was going to be some bleed through, so as soon as I could tell, I stopped and I dried that paint, and I went in with a coat of Polycrylic Sealer just to um, block the bleed through from happening and I had to let my sealer dry really well. Then I finally came back and did two coats of the drop cloth and it covered perfectly after that with no bleed through, thank goodness. two coats of paint had dried. I am then going to seal it again with the polycrylic sealer. It's a water-based sealer and I am sealing now because we're going to do some transfers and oh I did distress it somewhat first just I used a combination of my sanding block and wet distressing just to distress the edges a little bit bring back some of that wood color and then i'm going to seal it with some polycrylic because we're going to be doing some transfers <music>
I let my sealer completely dry before the transfers. And this is the Malo's Pages. It is chalked full of florals and plants and bugs, all kinds of different things. I want to use mushrooms and florals and some of these vegetables on this bowl. The great thing about this transfer is there's so many different ways that you can cut them out. So I just decided I'm going to do the entire bowl and I'm going to start with mushrooms first. So I got a few out for the front side and a few out for the back side and I'm going to put those on before I move on to the florals and then finally I'll move on to the vegetables until I get the whole bowl covered just like I want it. To apply your transfers is so easy. You just take the white backing off, place it onto your project and rub it with the tool that it comes with. If you lift from the edges as you're going and allow a little bit of air to get up under that plastic, your transfer will release a lot easier and you can tell the color will change as your transfer releases. And then once it's on your project, you can take the your fingers or the plastic backing and just burnish it down. So I'm just gonna continue to put all these transfers that I've picked out all over this bowl along with my curious little helper here. He has to be up under anything that I am doing, and he's just the cutest thing. get all my transfers on I'm going to do one more coat of the polycrylic sealer just to seal the transfers in and y'all this is my favorite I cannot believe how gorgeous this bowl turned out I gotta be honest I wasn't sold on this transfer pack immediately but I totally am now I love the neutrals I love the colors I love everything about it moving on to project number three we are going to be using the new iod molds this is dewdrop pond and toadstool i'm going to be uh, making some castings out of amazing resin this is the quick set resin very simple to use one part a one part b stir it up really well and pour it into your molds and in no time your molds will start setting up a little advice when using the amazing cast in resin don't mix up too much because it will start setting up really fast and you won't be able to get it all poured fast enough so just do small amounts of it and that way so you don't waste any of the resin This is after just a couple of minutes after pouring. So that's how fast it sets up. And this is about 15 minutes after, and this is good and hard and set up. I mixed up, you know, I poured up more than I was gonna use. I wasn't sure which mushrooms I was gonna use. So um, I just went ahead and poured several up. And um, also I made some of the, um, 
Dewdrop Pond. I had to do this really, really beautiful fern and the hummingbird and the dragonfly. And then I'm also going to make up the, the frog and a couple of snails with some air dry clay because I'm going to place them over things. And so I needed to be able to mold them. And then I'm just going to use some of the um, Tight Bond Quick and Thick Glue. It's white when you put it on, but it dries clear. I'm just gonna, this is actually a clock that didn't work that I got at the thrift store and I have had it in my hoard for a while. Unsure what to do of it. So I thought this would be a fun little project to make this little toad stew village inside of this clock. So I'm getting all of my castings glued on and then I am going to put the frog like over one of the little mushrooms and I'm going to put the snails kind of on the outside of the clock like they're climbing around it and then we're going to get started painting it. several layering and different things on this but I'm going to start with aviary and I'm just going to give the entire clock backing everything one coat of this aviary um, and then come back and touch up over the clay just a little bit and I think I had to do two coats on the clock <music> aviary color has dried I've got several artist brush and several different colors so I'm going to go over the frog with um, a darker green I think this is Monet's garden and then I'm going to do agave by Waverly over the dragonfly I'm going to bring in some yellow and do some mushrooms and some brown for the stems. Just giving everything just a little bit of pop of color. I'm gonna do gray over some of the snails and then some yellow on um, one of the snails shell. And just a really light green and just all kinds of different colors. Um, these are not gonna stay like this, like this bright, but I wanted to you know, just give everything just a little bit of color first. And then once that paint is dry, I'm going to seal the entire project up with some clear wax before we move on to the other waxes. the clear wax I'm going to come in with some metallic colors these are all rub and buff and just give everything a little bit of shine I put some silver over the dragonfly and then I'm going to put some antique gold over everything else and that's just going to dull those colors down a little bit I'm going to let that dry and then the next step we're going to come in with some dark wax go over the whole project um, with this dark wax, that'll stay in all the little crevices and really dull everything down again. And then finally, once we're done with the dark wax, I got to come in with some white wax to brighten everything up. This, like I said, this is just layers upon layers. And I'm really just hoping that I like the way that it turns out in the end. And I really, really do. This is not the kind of thing that I would normally do, but it was so much fun and just, it felt so creative to just be doing all these different layers and all these different colors. And um, I highly recommend trying something like this. 
Um, you really don't know how you're going to feel about it until you get it finished. And I love this clock. I've decided to keep it for myself. It goes perfect on my mantle right now. And I hope you guys like how this project has turned out. for today's last project with the other castings that I made I had this little frame that I got at the thrift store for 99 cents I glued all those castings on there the hummingbirds hanging off the top and we have that beautiful fern I'm going to cover the entire thing with two coats of Dixie Belle's drop cloth <music> the paint is dried I am going to come in and seal it with some clear wax before moving on to the next step and wouldn't you know the next step is going to be some dark wax there's some really nice details in that frame and all the amazing details in those molds that I want to bring out so I'm just going to put the clear I mean the dark wax on and then rub it back with a paper towel covering the entire thing the entire thing is dark waxed it looks so good already but I still want to bring it up a notch so I'm going to use some of this antique gold rub and buff and I'm just going to take it on my fingertips and go over the raised parts on the bird and the mushrooms and just all the raised parts and paying special attention detail to the mushrooms and covering them with some gold um, rub and buff and I just love how it brings out all this detail and just makes everything stand out I love the neutral colors of this little frame it is so gorgeous in person the pictures don't even do it justice Y'all don't forget to let me know in the comments which was your favorite project from today's video. Like this video and you can share it out. I would so much appreciate that. I really also want to tell you guys thank you for hanging in there with me through this surgery and I'll get back to doing some intros. Um, I did go back to the office last week for a couple of days and this is my first week for a whole week in the office and I start physical therapy on Tuesday, which y'all aren't seeing this till Wednesday, but I started physical therapy yesterday. So hopefully I will be off crutches before too much longer. Um, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed these thrift flips and I'll be back next week.